Creating or scaling a product using vision and strategy. So the last time we talked, we talked about virtual products, different things that you could use as a software, as a service. So what I felt like I didn't do in the last episode was give you guys a real example of how to uh, envision what a product actually is. Take that idea or whatever it, whatever idea it is that you have, how do you take that idea and turn it into a working solution? How many people know of somebody who had a great idea that they never actually took anywhere? Maybe you had an idea and you saw the same idea blow up a year later or two years later, however long. You, you definitely can say that there's been plenty of people around you, if not yourself, in which that idea actually did turn into something. Now, when we talk about a vision, there's many times in which you'll have a vision for this new idea, a new app idea, a new website, uh, whatever the product is. And from there, you know, maybe your idea falls apart. You put it in your back pocket and a year later, two years later, uh, you and your friends are talking about it and you see that somebody actually went out there and executed and built it. Um, that's exactly why I wanted to talk about vision and strategy. Vision and strategy is one of the larger components of product management. Uh, at the basis of product management, you have a, a team of people, a product manager or a product team that is responsible for scaling the product. So let's just take the example of Shazam. Most people know Shazam is an app in which uh, you can pretty much pick up any audio and whatever audio is picked up, it'll search or do a, 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 a scrape of all the music or audio frequencies that are out there until it picks up what song is actually being played. And it'll tell you exactly what that song is. So when it comes to a vision, there was once an entrepreneur out there who had this vision. They said, I see it as a problem when I hear a song or my friend hears a song and they can't tell me what song it is. We know the lyrics, uh, but we're forced to go on Google and look up the small snippet of lyrics that we actually know searching song after song until we find the right artist and the song that's playing so that entrepreneur had that in their head they had they saw the problem and from there they had a vision that they wanted to allow people to just simply press a button it records the audio and from there you can actually get the song back directly to you on the app so if you haven't already please go ahead like and subscribe and then we're going to jump right back into it so this entrepreneur saw that problem uh, from there they thought of the different types of people that might benefit from having this application solution the software solution and as this entrepreneur thought of uh, who would be experiencing the problem he started to craft a story around why this particular software solution would be a benefit to others so when i say build a story it's about how you market it how are you able to come up with all the different pain points um, different areas in which somebody's going to have a negative experience if they don't have this working solution they don't have this new software as a service let's say uh shazam today uh they have this working product you know they they started with their mvp a minimal viable product in which all it did was listen to audio and scrape the internet and tell you exactly what the song was but let's just say in the future a product team works together and they keep that same vision in which shazam started with um, and again, th these product teams can sometimes simply be a small uh, uh, group, organizational function or group, uh, but sometimes you'll have multiple product teams. I want to use a scenario as if Shazam has one product team, which I'm sure is not the case, but we'll use that uh, just for the case of the example. So uh, this product team has the same vision that Shazam started with, and now they're responsible for scaling the product. This is where the strategy is going to come into place. So. With, uh, with the sound strategy, they're, they're gonna start to talk about um, what the customers are talking about, what the customers are experiencing. They're gonna come up with a new set of problems and they're going to uh, pretty much back all of this by data. So quantitative data refers to any information that can be quantified. So that is numbers, think metrics. It can be counted or measured or given a value. So uh, when we talk about quantitative data, we're talking about pretty much all of those KPIs and metrics uh, that are you're using the base off of your um, your product. What is important to the users? Is it how many listens, how many plays, how fast that this music is being pulled up on the Shazam app? Um, there's a bunch of different KPIs and metrics that you can consider, but just understand that quantitative data is something that can be measured in numbers. Qualitative data, however, is you measuring the uh, social impact 
the sentiment that's out there. What are your customers actually saying? How are they feeling? How are they thinking? Can you understand them better from a qualitative perspective? So a good product team is going to take all of the qualitative and quantitative data that they can get, and they're going to use that data uh, to drive their decision making. Data driven decision making is a huge component of what will make a successful product. So as we get into this talk about strategy, you know, we pretty much started with the vision and what the problem is, uh, who the who are the people that are using the product or would be affected by the product? What's the market looking like? What's the landscape of the market? Um, but what we're going to do now is shift into the strategy. So when you have this idea, when you want to scale the Shazam app uh, or this this product team is going to scale the Shazam app, they're going to take all that data. They're going to start to come up with new ideas. They're going to ideate. They're going to come up with a bunch of new solutions that may uh, end up being imperative for the customers, may end up being robust and disruptive in the market. Uh, so Shazam looks at all the qualitative data and the quantitative data. They work with their UX research partners. Um, they work with their designers. And what they end up coming up with is they want to take it a step further. Instead of just being able to uh, scrape the internet for music based on an audio clip, they want to also be able to scrape videos. So Shazam says, if you play this small snippet, um, we can actually not only help you locate music or audio, but we now also support MP4 or video formats as well. So if you look up, I mean, if you play a small snippet of audio and they're listening, it can actually pick up where the where the um, soundtrack came from, from a video. Now, I'm sure there's a lot of problems with that. You can probably imagine how many different videos play some of the same audio. Uh, however, for the use of this, let's just say that that's the idea they came up with, limiting the amount of errors or mistakes that can come up with this. And it actually does pull up the um, the, the video file. So uh, what they'll do is they'll come up with what's called a product roadmap. Now, they'll have they'll have the idea of the new feature or, or what direction they're going to take Shazam in. And they'll start to break this down. The vision is there. The problem is there. Who it's affecting is there. Now they need to get very tactical and strategical in their approach. They'll want to come up with first a product roadmap, uh, which will be based off of the estimates that come from the engineers. They'll they'll have the designs in hand. Uh, they'll already have brought this to their designers. Designers would have already made a couple of mock-ups and the, the product team is going to be responsible for showing these designs to the engineers. So the engineers will then take these designs and pretty much estimate one, what the effort is, but two, they'll tell you whether or not they can even make it. Maybe there's some data points that they can't even get to. It's not possible yet. So uh, they'll not only say, hey, if we want to do this, this is how much time it'll it'll take. But they'll also tell you why. Why is it going to take this long? Oh, uh, because we don't have this data here, but we can actually build it. It's just going to take this amount of effort. Or, yeah, we have all the data points that we need. Uh, it's not that much effort. It may take us a couple of cycles, a couple of sprints. Uh, a few weeks or, or or whatever you guys are pretty much working in basing your time off of. And from there, you'll start to break that down into what they call user stories, um, features, epics. Uh, there's a there's a bunch of different terms I'm using here, but just understand that they'll start to break down what's going to be built into small chunks. Now, um, as I talked about the strategy, we talked about the roadmap. There's also going to be things in there which you'll consider releases. Maybe you have this MVP idea of taking Shazam uh, from where it currently is, it, it, its original MVP, and now you have a new iteration or new service that uh, that Shazam is going to offer, and this would also technically be considered an MVP. So if you're talking about bringing these YouTube, I'm sorry, if you're talking about bringing um, video formats uh, being supported on the Shazam platform, that itself would be considered a minimal viable product. Now you're going to take uh, you're, you're going to take this and you're going to break down the MVP into these smaller chunks but you're also going to want to roadmap it in a way that lets you know this is the first release of this new feature within the next two or three releases two or three quarters or how again whatever you're basing the time off of you may have another iteration of releases so they originally start to um, allow this video for maybe only certain video types and then you fast forward um, a few uh, cycles later and now we support all video formats i mean it's as simple as that you pretty much want to roadmap this in a way 
um, that you have a strategical plan or strategical approach um, to how you're gonna scale your product. Now, from there, you have a roadmap, you, your engineers have estimated, they've let you know exactly how much effort is gonna take. What you're gonna do as a product team now is start to approach this in a tactical way. So now that you have your strategy set in stone, you need to work with your engineers to break down the work uh, into these cycles. So it's not just this epic, this huge, uh, this huge chunk. You're also gonna wanna break that chunk into smaller chunks. You have this MVP on the roadmap, you have your release cycle set up, your next step as a product team is going to be to get the work to become digestible. So you're going to want to take that chunk and break it into even smaller chunks. Um, this is what we typically would call features. And at an even smaller level, you're going to want to break it down into user stories. So these user stories typically capture a value, a value behind the work. If your team is able to knock out this small chunk, you're immediately adding new value into your product. So when I when I talk about this value that we're adding, you're breaking it down at this level. Um, when you start to refine this work, when you actually get the details, the requirements of this user story, you're now working at a tactical level. So you're now becoming more tactical in how you approach the work or the, the goal that you have in mind uh, that you're trying to accomplish. I wanted to share one last experience and that's what is it like to create too much work as opposed to, you know, getting your MVP just right? How do you know when you have the exact amount of features or value behind the basis of your idea, this new application or this new feature um, in which you're scaling for this product that you have in mind? So when I was a very novice product owner, uh, I had just jumped into product ownership and I was tasked with enhancing the customer account management experience and the order tracking experience for a major retailer. Now, when I took over product ownership, I didn't have much guidance. I didn't understand what it meant to start out with an MVP. I, I just knew what the customers exactly desired. I knew what they wanted and I wanted to go ahead and knock it all out in one go. So I created over a million dollars worth of effort that I thought my engineers would be more than happy to take on. And they were, they were definitely happy to take on the work. It was going to create a lot of new work for them. But what I was unsure of, or what I should say, what the department was unsure of is whether or not the amount of money that it was going to cost to do this effort was going to bring them back a good return on investment in the time frame in which they, they were wishing to see it. So um, after you know conversations with leaders, conversations with our team, we had to go back to the drawing boards and come up with what the value is going to be behind this new idea. What are the bare amount of features that we can consider that are going to add the most value up front? And once we validate it, we can continue to add additional features that'll bring more value. In my more mature product experience, we did exactly that. We actually did um, start out with conversations using a concept called design thinking. We'll talk a lot more about that in a future episode. But by using design thinking, we were able to get into the customer's heads a bit more, understand their needs more, and get down to the bare minimum of the value that they needed up front. When you start with an MVP, you spend a lot less time and effort trying to validate an idea. You don't always need to go in and build using engineers or build using um, you know, coding it yourself or, or whatever method you choose to approach. You can actually do MVPs in a lot um, smaller budget altogether, a lot less time. You can use uh, prototyping tools you can even do an entire MVP just by drawing it and explaining how this particular product or service would work, what value it's going to add to your intended audience. Um, but to know how you got the MVP right, you're going to need to validate it. You're going to need to put it in front of your intended audience, let them test it out, use your metrics that you have in mind and see whether or not you're converting customers over into your um, original plan and strategy. There's a ton of more that we could jump into, but I definitely wanted to keep it short. I wanted to make sure you guys understood from the last episode how exactly you come up with an idea and turn it into a working product. You definitely want to make sure you understand an MVP. You want to make sure you understand what it means to create a vision, having a problem, having an intended audience, understanding how the rest of the market is landscaped, whether or not you're creating a robust, a disruptive new idea or feature. Um, and are you actually scaling the product with a sound vision and strategy behind it? Are you able to come up with a tactical approach and how you and your team 
are going to build this new product or service. Product management is simple. Have a vision, have a strategy, work towards scaling your product with that same vision and strategy and the same audience and voice of the customer in mind. If you have questions, leave comments. I'd be glad to answer them for you. Me and my team are working diligently to help people find careers in technology, find careers in any field that you desire. Come check us out, earnfigures.com. We'll see you next time.